Welcome to Pinball Mayhem. Me and Jeremy are combining our forces for a video tour of Extreme Home Arcades. You're still rolling? Sure. All right, let's uh, let's go on inside and uh, meet David. Uh, hello, David. Well, hi again. <laughs> uh. Uh, I thought you um, made large arcade machines. Um, these are a little smaller than I kind of expected. <laughs> if I put the large ones on my desk, it would break my desk. <laughs> I understand that you recently moved to this location. How long has Extreme Home Arcades, formerly Dream Home Arcades, been uh, around? Sure. Well, Dream Home Arcades started back in 2004, and it started just like an American business in the garage, <laughs> uh, tinkering together with stuff, and uh, eventually we put our first machine together made out of the original one was a Donkey Kong machine uh, that we had gutted and then you know, put our system into. And I think we had somewhere around 80 classic games and we called it the Vertical Dream Machine. So that's where the first prototype kind of started. We put it up on eBay, it sold really well, and I'm like, well, let's do another one. So we did another one, then we did another one, and another one, and another one. And now, 20, almost 20 years later, we uh, have thousands of them all over the world. When, when we met, I'm like, wait, wait, this, there's an arcade building in central Wisconsin, and yeah. I can get team only whenever I want? <laughs> <laughs> Joysticks and whatever you need, yes. Yeah. What do you think setting you apart from the kind of the sea of people putting 60 and ones in old cabinets? Well, I think it was the, the fact that we were able to add games constantly. So we just kept adding new stuff, new stuff as people requested it. We were able to build, eventually we started building our own cabinets because we ran out of old cabinets that we could find in the local area at warehouses and other places where we dug them up. And it just got to the point where we're like, we're going to stop cleaning out all the mice and, and <laughs> you know cigarette butts and everything else out of these things and just start building them ourselves. So once we were able to do that, then we were able to literally build a custom machine from a sheet of wood to a final product and now we have somewhere around 70,000 games on every machine we build. Well, no longer a garage project, it has <laughs> blossomed into 16 employees. So this is how it starts, so every arcade machine starts out just like that. Nothing but a sheet of wood and then by the time Dan's done it looks something like this. So that's pretty cool um, and then you know that's this is another Megacade. We build so many Megacades that it seems to be like the only thing we build sometimes but we do have some other ones too. But they're very popular. I think people like the fact that the monitor is as wide as the control panel. So you got this huge monitor made it with a four player control panel and it's the best of all worlds. We got Anthony building control boxes over here, which is another important part of everything that has to go together. What do you think your customers have changed in, over the years from when you first started almost 20 years ago to now, uh, their needs and demands, what, what, what have you seen changing coming from them? Well, we get all different types of customers. I mean, we have the customers that just want to play classic arcade games, and then we have the customers that, which is a lot of our customers, who wanted to have everything under the sun. And of course, as more modern consoles become available for putting on our machines, they want that, they want everything, you know, and they, they want to do all sorts of lighting effects and custom panel layouts and custom special types of joysticks and everything. So I think just being able to build anything for whoever wants it, I mean, from the simplest to the most high-end, expensive, you know, 10 plus thousand dollar machines, we can do it all. So we have a proof, basically, that this is the, the artwork that's designed by our team in Amsterdam, and then it goes out uh, to the customer after they put it together. Customer says, yeah, I like this, I don't like this, move this here, move this here, and then it you know, eventually we get their 100% approval, and then it goes to printing in uh, Michigan, and then it arrives in tubes, like this, let me show you this. So it just comes in a tube like this, all rolled up like a big poster, big sticky poster. And then it gets flattened out and then applied to the cabinet itself. So then it gets rolled over, T-molded all nice around the edges. Uh, like the kick plate area here gets put on. This one's getting a neon ring in it. So that is already cut out and ready to have that uh, neon ring put in and, and lit up. Okay, so right. if someone wants something uh, for, you know, theme to Tron. I think that was one of the one of the ones that I thought really turned out great. Right. They want, uh, I looked on your website, saw a neon insert in the right. side that looked really cool. Yeah. And, uh, so you, you can say, hey, you know, your, your basement's themed Tron or you want a, a Fallout themed game, we can build right. it. Right. And, and so the, every, every machine is then built yes. for the customers. Yeah, There's custom no work inventory, yes. no stock or anything like no. that. No. I mean, it, obviously we have some certain templates that we use a lot, whether it's a Megacade or Stealth or Classic Upright or whatever we use, but so we can start with a template and just go from there. But I mean, the artwork's all custom, paint finish could be custom if it wants something different than black even. So then we move into here and this is the paint world. So we invested a serious amount of money to do this right this time. So we built this huge paint booth that's OSHA approved now with our big fan system and everything. So we can paint, I mean, we can paint a car in here if we want to, but. Um, this is where the cabinet ends up after a sheet of wood. You can take a look in there, but 
Um, they basically come in here and then get cleaned off and, and all the dust gets taken out and then it basically gets sprayed. So we have a really cool spray system um, that's actually water-based nowadays. We used to use um, more volatile chemical spray systems that were more flammable. So where a paint booth like this would really shine is for something like that. But nowadays we can use a water-based, much safer, uh, faster drying spray system that is actually really, really durable. So it can be whatever they want. So it can really be tailored to whatever the customer needs. Cool. And we, work, we live in a, a niche environment where we can build what people want, but it can be simple, it can be complicated, it can be whatever they like it to be. So I think that's that's what I, I think they appeal. And plus they get to call in, they get to talk to the owner anytime they want. So that's still something that people value. And yeah. in our, our modern world of push this for this and you know push two for whatever service, you know now they can just call in and, and they can just talk to me, which is nice. And we've always tried to establish that and our customer service has really snowballed this industry for us and our, and our business has boomed because of it. So we've learned a few things over the years, yes. But you know, you go from a Marvel uh, superhero kind of theme cabinet to a <laughs> Seahawks cabinet. So yeah, and you can see them all coming together. These guys are putting the marquee in here, which goes behind glass. And this is, I mean, and then this is about as, I mean, you got a variety of different cabinets here, but then we get all the way, you know, to Space Invaders. So we're kind of going back, back to, you know, an old original cabinet that's modified then to fit on a big mega cave like this, which is our most popular machine we built. So, each one of these guys is doing that. And then we get into the control panel area. And this is where they're starting them, building the panels from start here on a blank panel all the way to finishing it up with polycarbonate there and making it beautiful, getting the artwork assembled and then handing it off to these guys to finish assemble it. Average build time right now with over 250 custom orders in our queue is right around eight to nine months. So obviously we were ramping it up, moving into a bigger facility and we're now at around 30,000 square foot a facility here where we came from right around 1500 so we've <laughs> grown huge and obviously we hired in new employees to try to pick up the slack but it's still coming in at the same rate that we are ramping it up to so it's not it's just trying to battle the the pile of orders that and try not to let it get even higher because I don't want to make people wait for over a year to get a machine all right so this is the area where we build computers put them together Start from a motherboard level, basically processor, put them in cases, get them all ready to go. Then they end up on these shelves here waiting to go in machines that are finished. This is also kind of our staging area where we have some machines that are waiting on some final payments from customers, some that are waiting for the customer's home to be ready, some that are coming back for upgrades and, and repairs or what might need to be done on them. Uh, that's pretty rare, but every once in a while we'll get something that uh, they either want to do a major overhaul on it, uh, change out artwork, upgrade software, and they're, you know some customers just don't want to do that on their own, so we take that on, and that's an example of that machine. Um, this one's just waiting for a software update as well, and then we got our copy bench where we do some of our hard drive copying for making uh, our software and getting that ready as well. Out of the custom orders that you have built, mm -hmm. uh, any that stick out in your mind that you can talk about? I mean, we built a lot of machines for celebrities. I mean, Anthony Davis of the Lakers, we just finished a machine for him. Um, we've done ones for like, uh, I'm trying to think now, NFL players, uh, some baseball players, but most of our customers are just average guys in their man caves that want to play games and relive you know, their years of growing up in the arcades. Yeah. And now we can bring that all to them. But we built some cool machines for uh, different customers, but most of the ones that we build that really stand out are when people come up with new ideas that we've never done before whether it's putting pinball buttons on a special size box that'll fit, you know, they can play pinball at a comfortable distance on a four player machine. Oh, okay, um, we're looking through the stations and um, this cabinet is is uh, different than the, the Mega Kate over yep. there. This what, what is, is it? This is one of our pedestals. This is a four player uh, special, the special box, it's called a battleship box. So this is a box that is specifically designed for pinball. So normally with a two player, box, you can have the buttons on the side, right? If you don't have to reach that far, it's fine. Unfortunately, with a four player, not everybody has this sort of wingspan. You're going to be <laughs> sitting there over the top of the panel. It doesn't feel good. Unless you're playing like uh, Atari Hercules. Yeah, exactly. Right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So what we've done is we've gone and made a battleship box, which puts this protrusion off the front of it and allows you to have two pinballs and a plunger button so you can play on a four-player pedestal, you can, or a four-player box, you can play a uh, pinball game much more comfortably. So that was kind of devised because someone came up with that idea. Um, building in active marquees into cabinets for you know modern effects and things like that, lighting effects. Uh, we built a machine out of stainless steel for a customer. Oh wow! That was crazy because it required special tooling to cut all the holes and do all that stuff because stainless steel is very hard. 
this is the final the final lap before it goes goes out and gets crated. So these are machines that are all ready to go. This one we're delivering to a customer locally. This is just like a Badgers, Packers, um, Brewers, and Bucks themed cabinet. But this is one that, this is a, a cool example of perfect Photoshop work that our guy does where he took, this is actually the customer's head right here. And I need, you'd have to tell me what theme this is, you know? You know what this this theme is? It looks like uh, Interstellar. Yeah, I think so. So Interstellar. So he likes the characters. The the family loves the show. So they did you know a picture of him with his superimposed head on the Interstellar guy there, and then something with that with his son. And uh, I think on this side, I don't. Let me roll it around here. Yeah, don't don't don't, uh, don't take No, I will not. Oh. But oh, if you can see this side, of course, this is. I think, oh, that's his, I think that's his daughter or his son, one way or the other, but we've done that a lot before with superheroes and stuff where we'll transpose people's heads and bodies and all sorts of fun stuff. So that's just another creation, but you can kind of drink it in, take it out. I mean, it's a lot of work from a sheet of wood till a final product, but it's pretty cool to see what you can do, you know, right here, local Stevens Point and ship all over the world. So on your website, machine. you have all these kind of standardized forms, but if someone says, I like that, but I really like the control panel to be like this, right. not a problem. Right anything because it, again it's from a sheet of wood so as long as we can physically do it and it's cost effective yeah. we'll do it I mean, yeah we've done some for lots of, you know for businesses like t-mobile um there was a slacker radio i don't know it was kind of competing with pandora for a while radio uh, online radio when online I, radio I stations first started getting popular yeah so slacker radio was one that we did there was uh, obviously for google we built machines for google in canada oh wow so those are big and they were actually using them as a giveaway to promote google <laughs> In Canada so we've built I think three or four machines for them so that was fun and then we've you know got to build machines for people like Jason Sudeikis from Saturday Night Live and every movie under the sun so I could talk to him that was pretty cool oh. um, I'm trying to think there's there's so many of them and you know when you spend 20 years of your life doing something yeah. and doing it to the maximum level as many as you can produce for that long you really produce a lot of fun stuff well thank you for taking the time with us uh showing us around the facility uh and and, and showing us off these these cool games hopefully your your customers uh enjoy seeing their games on the internet and uh uh we'll definitely put some contact information uh in the video uh or below so, uh, I mean, thank you for watching and uh, stay tuned for more.